Okay, thanks. Uh, so I'm going now to compress my uh, entire dissertation to be into 15 minutes, uh, both planned work and uh, the tentative findings. So uh, <clears throat> I'm, going, I'm writing about the immigration comedy in the Scandinavian public spheres. And um, the main research question of this project is to see how to give television humor has contributed to the treatment of immigration in the Scandinavian public sphere, so in Sweden, in Denmark, and in Norway. And I will do this in uh, two parts. I will make a historical overview of um, comedy that has somehow thematized immigration or immigrants, and then I will mean it will include um, comedy produced by immigrants themselves, but also by, let's say, ethnic Danes or Norwegians. Uh, and I will make an overview and see what how it can be characterized. Uh, what's the birth of the joke? Uh, are there any like aesthetic um, characterizations? Who are the comedians? Is it public broadcasting, commercial broadcasting, and so on? I will look into the similarities and differences between the three countries, and also how it does relate to other discourses concerning immigration using the material uh, gathered and coded by Anne Frederick and Hilmar, and also of course, its reception in the three countries, um, which so far is not very large, the media reception, as far as I found. The second part is a closer textual analysis combined with audience analysis, where I will look into how selected TV comedy shows are experienced by their intended audiences, and from that try to understand or argue if these readings and these shows can provide some kind of resources for the public share in uh, different ways. Um, so far, I have uh, done two things. I have been in Sweden in uh, the National Library, Kungna Bibliotheke. Uh, it was selfish choice to start with Sweden because they have the nicest library and friendliest librarians. And uh, I searched for all I yeah, just try to find all kind of comedy that has been thematizing immigration and I did that by watching uh, or fast forwarding through all Swedish comedy shows from 1970 till then now. Um, and then I have been uh, conducting a focus group study. Uh, which... one comedy program per year? <laughs> no, I, it's not so much in the 70s. They actually, they only show the variety shows from some theater, so that was, I just took a couple of days to do. Um, and then I have done one focus group study uh, that I'm uh, completing now uh, on the Norwegian television program Black Humor that is currently being broadcasted. And I did that on different uh, schools in Bergen, uh, and I will talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but first, I will talk a bit about, uh, I started to analyze the Swedish material. Um, I have uh, some ideas about um, what can be interesting to uh, look further into, and one of these I will present now. And that's how uh, anti-racist and anti-xenophobic comedy has developed. Uh, that starts very early. I think the first uh, comedy shows in Sweden that thematize immigration is actually thematizing anti-immigration or actually anti-gypsy attitudes. In, uh, in the um, variety Gula Hun, I think, by Lasse Nauhassa and Tage from uh, 69. Uh, <clears throat> this continues through the 80s, um, and it really explodes around 1991 when stand-up comedy uh, enters the Swedish television from uh, the bar Nora Brunn in Stockholm and the show Schlengde i Brunn. And this is Lasse Lindroth uh, and his alias uh, Ali Hussein. Uh, Lasse Lindroth is interesting because he was uh, adopted from uh, Tehran, so he was grown up as Swede in an ethnic white Swedish family. Uh, with, yeah. But he was the first, nevertheless the first comedian with some kind of immigrant background, and he really started this kind of immigrant humor, or blatte humor, as they actually started to call it. Um, <coughs> His shows are typically representing the immigrant stereotype. This uh, character, Ali Hussein, is both an immigrant from uh, Rinkeby, uh, the suburb of Stockholm, 
but is also a member of uh, a Nazi party. And uh, in his shows, he typically describes it to be as a place uh, where there are no Swedes uh, in Svenna, <laughs> only immigrants, but uh, and that uh, the Swedes are right, but of coke, not of uh, snow. Uh, and <clears throat> typical of these kind of jokes is that they are uh, very much dissecting the logic of xenophobia and racism. They're showing uh, its logical weak points, it's making fun of it, uh, and uh, they are very much based on this representation of attitudes rather than persons. Uh, of course, he is representing a character, al Hussein, but that is the idea of the criminal immigrant that is then actually ridiculing the ideas that these xenophobic or racist have. There are also other people in the same program, uh, David Batta with Indian background that saw similar things, and Ronnie Eriksson with uh, Ethnic Swede that also has some very uh, interesting jokes where he's uh, ridiculing ideas about what's typical Swedish and uh, have all this kind of stuff. But this changes a lot during the 90s. Uh, these are two shows, Hip Hip 2001 the, and Grotesco from 2010, uh, that sketch comedy. And they are, instead of representing the stereotypes and the ideas that the xenophobic people have, they are representing stereotypes about xenophobic people. Uh, the latter one here is from Hip Hip, that's the sketch about the blind Nazi. He is uh, a Nazi, but he's then blind, so that's quite some confusion when he meets immigrants that talk so good well Swedish, he doesn't understand there are immigrants, and he realizes they're nice and he doesn't know what to do. He lives with his mother, that's why he thinks the poster behind him is Hitler, but the mom changed it because she thinks it's embarrassing. And all these things. Uh, so basically he is uh, yeah, very infantilized, literally, and created as a stupid person. And this gets even stricter in the show of Protesto. This is the from their episode called uh, Svin Demokraterna, the Pig Democrats, which is a wordplay on uh, the Swedish Democrats. Um, <clears throat> the far right party in Sweden. And this show is uh, describing uh, a normal day in Skåne, the province south in Sweden where most, um, where it's just a strong base of the Sweden Democrats. And they are really portrayed as extremely countryside people with all the characteristics, the negative uh, traits this stereotypical hold had. And this is when they are singing about how great it is in Skåne and that we don't have any immigrants here. And uh, we are, uh, yeah, and they are, of course, lots of jokes about pigs and yeah, everything. Uh, so the interesting turn, I think, is that it somehow evolves from being criticizing the attitude, xenophobic attitudes to criticizing the xenophobic people and making some kind of... Um, caricatures of them. And uh, they are also, uh, in the early 90s, it seems like the xenophobia of Swedes in general are the target of the joke. But here there are small specific groups. Uh, the Nazis is one thing, but also that like people in Skåne in general is seen as a group that is attacked by the joke. Uh, this is a very preliminary analysis, but I think it can be interesting to pursue. Then to something completely different, uh, the focus group study uh, conducted about black humor, Swap Tubud. That's a pro-integration, pro-diversity uh, program on NRK. Uh, the basic script of this is that there is a comedian with immigrant uh, background that you see there, Yusuf, that walks around in Oslo and asks questions or does stunt with people. Again, mostly people with immigrant background, but some others as well. Um, it's a bit unclear what's the best of the joke. It can be that the immigrants' ignorance, that they don't comply with Norwegian habits or they don't comply, they don't know basic knowledge about Norway. Um, but you can also argue that it's joking about Norwegian identity somehow. Uh, it's very popular on the internet. It's distributed on YouTube and Facebook and uh, lots of people watch it there, but it's also shown on linear TV. 
and uh, I have conducted a self focus group study with this. Uh, I've done interviews with people from 16 to 25 years, uh, show them some selected clips and ask them to talk about that. Uh, the plan is to have eight focus groups in total. I divide them into newly arrived immigrants that have been here three to five years. Uh, second generation immigrants, uh, the, so they are born here. I also have, will do group with ethnic and Norwegian kids. And finally, I'm doing mixed groups where both second generation immigrants and ethnic and Norwegians are mixed. And um, I have started to transcribe and analyze the material here as well. It's quite interesting because it's a lot of ambivalences in this material. The first, I connect to the third person effect because almost everyone really likes this program. Most of them have seen it before, they appreciate it, they laugh. But when they talk, they think, but this isn't really good. It's not respectful to immigrants. Some people might be hurt. They can create a bad public image of immigrants towards Norwegians that don't know immigrants and, and so forth. So they expect this can be harmful some way, somehow, but not to themselves. There's also uh, ambivalence connected to aggression to Norway, embodied in this character, which is Finnish. He has a long rant in one of the programs <laughs> about how, uh, basically how uh, ridiculous and bad Norwegian values are. And he also starts to talk about how great the um, winter war was when Finland killed hundreds of thousands of Russians and the Norwegians were hiding. Uh, the interesting thing here is that this is the clip that creates most laughter in my focus groups. But they afterwards, they distance themselves from him. They say it was too much, that he doesn't behave well, and so on. And I've been thinking a little bit about it, and I think that his position is a bit dangerous for an immigrant. You can imagine if they didn't interview an old Finn, but if they interviewed a guy with a bit darker skin from Iraq telling how bad Norway is and how great it was in the 80s when they killed half a million Iranians, that would be quite a different perception, I think. So that's also something to follow. Uh, another finding is that almost everyone feels that this program is about them and for them. They don't really imagine that Norwegians like it. Uh, and they also, the second generation also imagined that uh, the newly arrived immigrants don't like it. Well, they do. And finally, there are some different patterns of identification. The second generation tend to like and identify themselves with the show host and the way he makes jokes with people while the newly arrived identify with the people that are interviewed and doesn't understand Norwegian really well and make some mistakes. Um, yeah. So uh, that's so far I reached in this material. I said I will still have some more groups uh, with ethnic Norwegians and also then continue to analyze analysis. So yeah, that was it. Thanks. <laughs>